When it comes to building a gaming PC, choosing the best CPU and GPU combo is arguably the most important step in the part selection process. Get these choices right and you're not only going to have a good idea of how well the build will perform, but it's kind of hard to get the rest wrong. And that's why today I'll be walking through the very best options for a range of budgets, right from the cheapest all the way through to the most expensive. And I'll also be talking about whether some of these combos actually make sense right now, and also looking at the kind of performance you can achieve for a range of different price points. Let's do this. Now the structure of this video is going to be as follows. First, I'm going to talk about some important context behind the state of the current CPU and GPU markets. Then I'm going to work through my favorite combos from the cheapest to the most expensive with benchmarks that compare all of them. As always, links to everything mentioned today will be in the description below for latest pricing and availability because pricing right now is kind of volatile. So shall we start with that? The reason pricing at the moment is a little bit all over the place is because we're in the aftermath of all the Black Friday, Cyber Monday sales. We're moving through into the holiday period and bluntly, AMD, Nvidia and even Intel are trying to offload a load of stock before their new generations land. We've already had it confirmed from Intel that new GPUs are coming. In fact, in a matter of days to get subscribed to see our coverage of that when they land, which is something budget gamers especially will want to keep an eye on. Those GPUs are both going to clock in for well under $300, which is quite promising. The rumor mill has got to the point where it's almost soft launching the 50 series for Nvidia. We're expecting 90, 80, 70, potentially another SKU as early as January, with even the budget GPUs to follow by the end of March or April. And while AMD have announced they're graciously bowing out of the high-end GPU segment, the skeptics would just argue they maybe don't quite know how to make a super high-end GPU. Sorry, AMD fans. They've also confirmed that they are going to have new cards in the new year, expecting RDNA 4 to land shortly. But I also get people who say to me then, James, well, I don't want to just keep waiting for this and waiting for that, because every time you wait, you're just delaying the point where you can actually get a graphics card, get a new CPU and get gaming. And you know what? You're absolutely right. A new generation also gives a great opportunity for deals. Let's be clear, the only reason Black Friday and Cyber Monday this year was actually good value in lots of places was because there's new stuff coming. And even when the new stuff does land, you're still going to have retailers and brands with older stuff they want to get rid of. So lots to chew over. I also want to talk about an important disclaimer on the CPU front. And the eagle-eyed amongst you will notice that every single CPU in my recommendations today is an AMD processor. Why? Intel Core Ultra, which recently launched, is just plainly not good enough. And Intel's last generation options just don't make sense because of the limitations of upgrades on the platform and the value that's represented by AMD CPUs right now. So look, I'm not being biased. I don't hate Intel. Far from it. You see, I've even got, if I do say so myself, a very attractive looking Intel jumper. Yeah, look at that. It's a good, it's a good Christmas. Should we jump into the combos? Yes, I think, I think we should. Now the first combo I'm going to talk about today is my entry level 1080p gaming combo. And this comes in presently for around $400. Now, yes, you can go cheaper. You could pick up a second hand GPU, or as I mentioned earlier, one of Intel's upcoming art cards, but we haven't got those in. We haven't tested them yet. So for now, this is what I'm going to recommend. And I feel as though I'm going to make a slightly controversial start to this video. Many people would say that you would pair up a Ryzen 5 7500F with an NVIDIA RTX 3060 from the last gen. It's got more VRAM than the newer 4060 and it's often a little bit cheaper. But I'm going to say don't do that and instead recommend this, the RTX 4060, a GPU that at launch I refused to build with because I thought it wasn't very good value for money. So please allow me to explain myself. The 4060 should really have another two or four gigabytes of video memory. And while the eight gigabytes on board is sufficient for 1080p games, it's plainly not as much as I might like. The reason that I recommend this over the 3060, which doesn't have the same VRAM limitations, is that this is sizably more powerful than the last gen 3060, and is going to give you more frame rate. In Apex Legends, for example, at 1080p high settings, this combo exceeds the 200 FPS average. That really is not too bad. And even in newer games like Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 at 1080p high settings, you're going to get over 100 FPS from this card on average, compared to to the 3060 that represents around a 25 frames per second improvement. We tested this combo with both cards and you can see side by side why the 4060 is what I'm ending up recommending. Even in harder to run RPG games like Hogwarts Legacy, which can be a challenge on even the highest end systems, it's quite VRAM heavy, still performed well on the 4060 with around 92 frames per second on average. So you can see this is a solid combo if you want to spend a reasonable amount of money and still get great 1080p gaming performance. The Ryzen 5 7 
7500F can be quite hard to find. AliExpress is normally where you'll find it in the UK. Otherwise, opt up to the Ryzen 5 7600, maybe 10 or $20 more. And it's still going to actually fit, to be honest, within around this $400 budget. Now, if you've got a little bit more money to spend, there is a lot more performance that you can gain. And that comes in the form of this, the AMD RX 7700 XT with that aforementioned Ryzen 5 7600. Now, this is AMD's one but lowest end tier of GPU. We've seen this go as low as about 350 USD. Right now, it's a little higher. As I say, we've got that price bounce after Black Friday. This is going to give you fantastic 1440p performance and do everything that you might hope the 4060 would be able to do. It's got 12 gigabytes of video memory, exceptional rasterization performance, and when paired with a chip like the Ryzen 5 7600, this is going to be an awesome choice. In Apex Legends, you get sizably more frame rate than our last 1080p combo with closer to 300 FPS on average at 1080p high settings. In Call of Duty's Black Ops 6, you're going to get around 150 FPS again at that same 1080p high configuration. Well, even Hogwarts Legacy delivers over 100 FPS in the triple digit frame rates with the 7700 XT and Ryzen 5 7600 non-X. But what if you want to jump up to 1440p gaming? And here I'd recommend you spend around about another $100 with a combo that's going to clock in in and around 700 USD. In terms of prices for other regions, there's a global Amazon link set down below. And if you click that, it will detect your country, ping you to the right Amazon. And yes, yeah, it's really, really useful. So go and check those out if you're wondering what these prices roughly convert to. Now, this combo is going to allow you to step things up quite sizably. The 7800 XT is, in my opinion, the better buy over the 7700 XT. It has a similar price point bump. You're looking at about $70, $80, but it's going to give you a real jump in performance. And it also allows you to select this, the AMD Ryzen 5 9600X. Now, again, in many respects, this CPU may seem a controversial choice because if you rewind back and look at the launch reviews of any of the Ryzen 9000 chips, apart from, of course, the new snazzy X3D, you'll see that people said they were a little overpriced. And a couple months ago when they launched, they were, and they're not anymore. Like with every AMD launch, the price is going to fall like a lead balloon, and you can now pick up the 9600X for a basically price parity with the 7600X. This combo is really one of my favorites. You get great upgrade paths. You can pop right up to a Ryzen 9800X3D or super high core 9950X on the same socket design, which is great. And the 7800 XT delivers awesome gaming performance. How awesome, you ask? Well, you're going to see well over 200 frames per second in Apex from the 7800 XT. Pretty nice. Alongside triple digit frame rates in Call of Duty's Black Ops 6, triple digit frame rates in Hogwarts Legacy, so well over 100 FPS in both. And all of this testing was done at 1440p high. If you want something that's a little more comfortable at 1440p now and into the future, you might instead want to consider this, the AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE. For the purposes of this video, I'm just showing the coolers I have to hand. But really, when it comes to a GPU, any cooler with two, preferably three fans on the higher end cards is going to be more than sufficient. Current GPUs are so power efficient and put out so little heat, you can get away with a much smaller cooler than you probably realize. Now, this is the 7900 GRE and pairs up beautifully with the Ryzen 5 9600X. Now, as I said in the previous combo, it's a six core, 12 thread chip. It doesn't provide a huge performance improvement over the last gen 7600X, but for price parity, the slight FPS bump and better power efficiency is worthwhile. If the 7800 XT was pretty comfortable, the 900 GRE is in a rather large plush armchair, just loving life at 1440p. It's great. 16 gigs of VRAM, perfect. Awesome rasterization, perfect. The only thing with this card, and it's a small caveat, but it's worth pointing out, is two words, ray tracing. If you want ray tracing in your system, you're going to be better jumping up to NVIDIA's RTX 4070 Super. Maybe a marginally slower card on rasterization, that's pure gaming performance, but in terms of ray tracing and DLSS, it's going to outstrip this card from AMD on both of those counts. So something to bear in mind if you're really a fan of playing games like Cyberpunk 2077, Black Myth Wukong, Star Wars Outlaws, all those kind of titles, really. Moving through to the 4K realm, and this is where I want to refer back, and I don't want to do this, I said I wasn't going to do this, to those new GPUs. Do I feel comfortable recommending combos that are going to cost in the region of $1,300, $1,500 that may soon become out of date? Not necessarily, but let's just carry on and see how we get on. This right here is the Ryzen 7 7700X. This is a last gen chip that commonly retails for around the 260, 270 USD price point, which is awesome and gives you eight cores, 16 threads and decent clock speeds. Paired up with something like a 7900 XT from AMD. And this combo is going to deliver nearly 200 frames per second in Apex Legends at 4K high, over 100 frames per second in Call of Duty's Black Ops 6 at 4K high. 
high and over 80 frames per second in Hogwarts Legacy at, you guessed it, 4K high. Now if you want even better 4K performance, you could even pair the 9800X3D with Nvidia's 4080 Super or RTX 4090. And this is a CPU that knocks it out of the park. This is the successor to AMD's hugely successful 7800X3D and delivers a nice bump in performance with great improvements to 1% lows. This really is the fastest gaming CPU and GPU combo you can buy full stop. And if you want the ultimate performance, this is what you're gonna go for. Again, be careful. We're expecting the 5090 and while yes, you may not wanna wait at this end of the spectrum, dropping two grand on a GPU when you know something better might be coming seems brand potentially a little foolish. In terms of performance though, it's gonna give you a really, really noticeable uptick over the 7900 XT and even Nvidia's own 4080 Super with 260 FPS at 4K high at Apex, 133 on average in Black Ops 6 at 4K high and superb ray tracing and DLSS performance across those titles we mentioned like Cyberpunk, Black Myth Wukong, Star Wars Outlaws, all of those big AAAs. The CPU and GPU market then right now is a little complicated and I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are. If you're waiting to build a system, what kind of GPUs do you think are still a viable bet? Is it everything up to the GRE or would you even go lower end before waiting for what Nvidia, AMD and maybe even Intel have to offer very shortly? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for watching and as always, we'll see you in the next one.